So what exactly makes a minimalist smartphone? I've heard of some people say things like, well, if you're really a minimalist, you wouldn't have a smartphone to begin with. But minimalism is about adding things that bring value to your life and removing what excess means for you. And that's unique to your life and your needs. This is by no means the right way to use a smartphone, but it's the way that I use it in a way that adds value to my life. Hey guys, I'm Yessie, and today I'm gonna show you what's on my minimalist iPhone. I will share tips that help me to keep my phone minimal, organized, and decluttered, as well as some hacks that help me to make adopting and sticking to more positive habits much easier. This way I can use technology in a way that can improve my life rather than create addictive phone habits. But so as not to drag this video out, I will create a separate video on tons of tips that help me to increase productivity and minimize distractions when using a smartphone. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that video or any of my other videos on minimalism and living life more fully with less. The iPhone that I have is the iPhone 12 Pro Max in gold. I absolutely love this thing. I use it to film the majority of my B-roll shots because it films in 4K. In the past, I used to love cases with funky designs and patterns on them, and I always found that I kept wanting to change them out for new styles all the time. For the past couple of years, I have used OtterBox. The one that I have is Symmetry and Stardust. This for me is the perfect mix between durability and simplicity, but with a little bit of sparkle. Between this and my glass screen protector, I am able to keep my phone safe, but also maintain a sleek look that isn't too bulky or attention grabbing. I have also dropped my phone numerous times, so a durable screen protector is a must for me. I will link both of these in the description box below in case you wanna check them out. And now onto what is actually on the phone itself. My lock screen is a short reminder of the way that I want to live my life and the person that I aim to be. Nothing super fancy here, nothing too stimulating or distracting. Welcome to my main screen. The background is a landscape photo of the Tennessee mountains, and I specifically chose this photo because it doesn't have a whole lot of colors, it's not too distracting, and it doesn't have too much going on. It's a serene image that I don't change out and swap for my kids' photos or photos all the time. This basically stays the same. So this for me is a perfect way to minimize distractions without using a bland solid color. As you can see, I keep only the basics on my main screen. On the bottom, I have the most used apps, calls, messages, internet, and of course my Google Calendar, which I am obsessed about for life admin. But keeping my main screen clear of any other apps makes it much more organized, so I don't have to sift through anything to find the ones that I use the most. I typically use Google Calendar to organize my day-to-day -day and to keep up with important dates and birthdays, but when I wanna make sure something absolutely gets done, I set an alarm. So right at the top left, I have my alarm app. I use the heck out of my alarms. If I'm cooking dinner and I just remember that I need to send a package in the mail, I'll tell Siri. And I also use the Siri function to schedule events on my Google Calendar. And I love doing this because I don't have to be in front of my phone and physically in front of the screen in order to get something done. For me, the more hands off I can be with technology, the better. And by the way, if this video is being helpful so far, please give it a thumbs up so I'll know to make more videos like these. All right, so moving on to the next page, this is where I keep the rest of my apps. I organize my apps by type and purpose. So the top three row are for education and entertainment. The next three are for education and organization. And then the bottom three are all for YouTube. And we'll talk about the groups later. Hoopla is the app that I use to obtain free eBooks and audiobooks from my local library. A similar version is the Libby app. You can go to your local library and find out if they have such an app. I love this app because it allows me to take mundane tasks like driving to work or washing the dishes and it gives me an opportunity to learn something. But I also use the Audible app because unfortunately my library does not have many of the newer books available. Audible has an incredible selection of over 180,000 titles in originals, audiobooks, and podcasts to choose from, either through subscription or you can purchase them to keep, such as my kids' favorite number songs. For your own free 30-day trial, as well as a free audiobook, you can use my affiliate link down in the description box below. You can cancel at any time, but using this link helps support my channel, so thank you in advance. And let me know what book you end up choosing. I'm always on the hunt for a good book recommendation. Okay, so back to my apps. On the sides, I have three different categories or groups. My utility group is basically my junk drawer for my phone. I've deleted most of the apps that come with the iPhone when you first get it and only kept the necessary ones. So for me, this is where I keep the necessary but rarely used apps. The middle group is where I keep our home finance apps such as banking, our security cameras, and where I manage our LIFX smart bulbs to set schedules for them or automatically dim in the evenings and turn it off at a specific time. It's also where I manage our smart thermostat. And I talk about these two in my video, how to wake up at 5 a.m. feeling glorious, because they're a huge help to me in creating better sleep habits, setting me up for a more productive day. And the rest are for grocery stores and gas stations that give loyalty discounts and coupons. 
The bottom group is strictly for my nursing job so that I can securely sign documents, message doctors, as well as send faxes for free right through my phone with easy fax. And so now I'll quickly guide you through the rest of my apps. I use Spotify to listen to music because I can create playlists. So classical music when I'm trying to focus, for example, or upbeat music when I'm working out. I use the free version and I can also use Siri to tell it to start a playlist or stop a playlist or even skip a song. I'll be honest, I rarely use the podcast app because 99% of the time I am either listening to music or listening to audiobooks. And embarrassingly, I'm still trying to learn how the heck it even works. But I would love to have a podcast someday so that you can have the option of hearing my content rather than having to watch it. So it's really there just as something that I'm trying to learn more about and that I want to do in the future. Duolingo is an adorable app that makes learning foreign languages fun and effortless. It has short lessons that give you reminders when you have missed a lesson, it's interactive, and it has a free version. The Notes app is where I jot down my video ideas, to-dos that aren't urgent, or recipes that turn out well. YouTube Studio is basically what I use to answer comments or make any changes to my videos. Of course, you're familiar with the YouTube app, but Canva is something that I'm recently experimenting with. You can use it to make invitations for web design, presentations, social media posts, to make collages, flyers. The possibilities are endless. I used it to create my first post on YouTube, and I'm having a lot of fun experimenting with it. And in the words of Bugs Bunny, that's all, folks. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If so, please give a thumbs up and subscribe so you won't miss when I post a new video. And feel free to let me know any video recommendations you have or that you would like to see in the future. I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.